from Camilla, Georgia, and I do pop music, pop music. I call it pop soul music because it's like a mixture of R&B, rock, jazz. It's kind of a fusion of everything, but everything that I sing, I can't help the fact that um, everything that I do has soul. So that's the foundation of everything that I do. So it's pop soul music, that's what I call it. Yeah, there's almost some gospel in it too. Definitely gospel. Yeah, yes. I want to get into that, but first, where is Camilla, Georgia? Camilla, Georgia. Camilla, Georgia is um, right is literally in the center of Southwest Georgia. Like most people, most people, if you look at the map of Southwest Georgia, most people automatically they know where Doherty County is, which is Albany. But right underneath Doherty County is Mitchell County, which is literally directly in the center of Southwest Georgia, and that's where Camilla is, right in the center of Mitchell County. Is there a lot going on down there? Um, there's a lot going on, yet it can sometimes feel like there isn't. Okay. <laughs> but there's a lot going on in Camilla, Georgia, a lot going on, um, a lot of good food. Um, family's a small town, so of course, everybody knows everybody. Everyone's mm -hmm. basically related. I made it very, very clear to everyone that I will have to probably leave Camilla and probably the country before I get married. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mess around and marry one of my cousins or something and not even know it. <laughs> I'm addicted to you. I've been knowing, I've been knowing I wanted to do music since I was a child. Since I was, as long as I've been alive, um, both of my parents, um, I'm actually a PK, um, a preacher's kid. Um, so both of my parents are pastors, um, Pastor Timothy and Pamela Miller down in Camilla, Georgia at Majestic Kingdom Embassy in Camilla. Um, down there, um, I grew up in our ministry, grew up in our church. Um, they started the church out of a choir, actually. In 1992, which was the year that I was born, they started the church actually founded from a choir, a local community choir of a bunch of teenagers and, <laughs> and middle school students. They were teaching them how to sing, teaching them how to harmonize. And of course, me, I was a baby at the time, but I grew up walking around the house walking around rehearsals, hearing them sing and harmonize and do different things all the time. So immediately that that planted a foundation in me that music was not just 
a hobby, but music was divine. It had a purpose to it. That music changed people's lives. Some of those people now, they were teenagers then, they were um, dropouts from in, in high school and different things. Now they're business owners, they're, they're um, professional um, therapists and counselors and different people like that. We've literally watched their lives change drastically over those years. So music, was always a purpose to me. It was always something divine, a calling, if you will. So for me, um, after my parents took me to see um, The Preacher's Wife with Whitney Houston, <laughs> I saw that. Listen, I heard her sing, I Believe in You and Me, and that was a done deal for me. I was like, yep, that right there, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And no no kidding, which is interesting because down in Camilla, we, we associate with the Thomasville area a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, in that area, um, one of my mentors is um, Carolyn Henry, who is um, actually a member of Georgia Mass Choir. They were in The Preacher's Wife movie with Whitney Houston in that movie so it's you know there's a lot of talent in Georgia um but just seeing that moment and growing up around that that's what made this this passion for being a musician and being a singer and being a performer inside of me and I've I've wanted it since then that's all I've ever wanted to do you got me waiting for me. 11 p.m., 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I've been waiting on you. 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. I've been waiting Let's find on Is there a moment in your childhood where it hit you how talented you are? Well, um, if there was a moment that hit me of how talented I was, I would say that I knew, I sang so much around the house that everyone really wanted me to hush. <laughs> I sang so much around the house, everyone need, um, wanted me to hush. My grandfather, who is no longer with us, he would literally tell me, hey, hey, write that down. <laughs> that is exactly what he would say to me. He would say, write that down. And I would be walking around the house and put on all these different clothes and different things because I would always be watching Michael Jackson and Destiny's Child and Janet and all the different stuff. So I would have my own wardrobe changes and dance around the house and all of that. And... I guess everyone was pretty much like, oh, he's just doing something. You know, we were around music and stuff in the church and all of that all the time. But it was like, oh, he's just doing something. But what made me realize that it, people were paying attention that I actually had something when I was in the fourth grade. I was in the fourth grade in Mr. Tory Williams class and I was actually um, taking um, English, English language arts with Miss Baker. I remember that vividly, I had learned um, a song and I was sitting in class and I remember I tried to treat this girl, this is what I get, I tried to treat this girl into singing it <laughs> in, for, in front of the class. And she was like, you'll sing it with me? I was like, yeah, I'll sing it with you. But I wasn't planning on singing it at all. And um, she got up and she sang and then, the te and then she told the teacher that I had said that I would get up there and sing with her as well. And I guess the teacher felt like she was gonna teach me a lesson. Um, by not, by, you know, by not, I was wrong for having her to go up there and do it mm -hmm. by herself when it was me that was supposed to be singing with her. And she said, Tim, you you can get on up, you can sing. You had her get up here, now you can get up here and sing too. Come on, get up here, be proud. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. And I was like, okay, so I got up and I sang. And I remember for the first time in my life, I sang and the room went dead silent. And everyone, the children, the teachers, everyone in the room was like, now it was, it was hilarious. And I spent the rest of the school day that day going from classroom to classroom to classroom with her going, oh my gosh, you guys are there Tim Sing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it was then that I realized, okay, this is something different. I have something that not everyone has. Humbly knowing that, but it's, but you do realize that, hey, there's something here. So yeah. What was the song? 
the song. Yeah. It was Count On Me, Count On Me, Whitney Houston and CeCe Winans. I was a Whitney fan. <laughs> I was a big Whitney fan. Whitney Houston and CeCe Winans, that was the song. Now, when you went to Savannah College of Art and Design, you went in Savannah. Yes. And then it's my understanding you got hired to work for SCAD after you graduated, is that correct? Very true, I did, I did. Um, about six months after graduation, six months after graduation, I was brought in from SCAD to um, teach private vocal lessons um, to some of their students here at SCAD Atlanta. Like that's a big deal. Yeah, it right? was it was a very big deal. I'm very humble about it. I'm very humble about it um, because I understand that um, all these opportunities, no no one has to think about you. No one has to think about you. No one has to call your name. No one has to offer you anything. Um, and though you work hard at different things, there are some people that work just as hard, and it just doesn't happen. So I'm very I'm very humble about it. But um, that that was a a very major deal. Um, I got to meet some interesting students. <laughs> got to meet some interesting students, have some great conversations. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. This song is called Forever. I wrote this one back when I was in college, back in Savannah, chilling on River Street. I just thought about love and what it means to us. When I think about you and the way you make me feel, my mind goes into a daze. I can't believe that it's surreal. I can put up my walls, but your love penetrates them still. And everywhere I go, I can see your face. I'm tripping. What is the deal? It's like I'm going crazy. But I refuse to take the pill Cause I don't wanna be cured by your love and sickness No, I don't wanna be ill You're obviously your a, a creator fire. at your core Tell me about the shoes you're wearing Oh, the shoes I'm wearing Well, the shoes I'm wearing These are a, a shoe that I designed called 1015 1015, um, actually my, my actual overall business is Nuance 1015 Creative. Um, so these shoes are called 1015s, which comes actually from scripture, which is Corinthians 1015, uh, which talks about how beautiful are the feet of those that carry the gospel. So what um, the shoes basically represent is that you should carry love wherever you go. Wherever you go, wherever wherever your feet walk, wherever your feet touch, wherever you, whatever room you enter, whatever place you go to, you should always carry love there and share love with someone wherever you go. How do you get to be able to design a shoe? Like, how does that happen? It it randomly <laughs> happened. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, um, my, my parents would probably tell you that they knew that fashion design was gonna be somewhere in the line because um, even when I even when I perform like I perform with um, I actually when I perform I perform like um, sometimes with a band and background singers but um, most of the time you'll see me performing with um, dancers and all that stuff because I dance as well and um, my dance captain Manny Manny Frisco Acosta in Tallahassee Florida he laughs at me all the time because he he's always says he always says the most one of the most interesting things is what is Tim going to have us wear. <laughs> that was his, what is Tim going to have us wear? And um, what ends up happening um, since I was a child, I used to always want to wear different things, and I would take my clothes, and it would make my mom so upset. But I would take clothes, and I would take scissors, and I would cut them. And <laughs> I would cut up scissors. I remember one time I had an inflatable sofa. This is so nineties. I had an inflatable sofa that um, it was an inflatable couch. It was purple and orange and green. And I remember watching um, Xenon Girl of the 21st Century on Disney. And I saw like the jacket, the vest that they had on and all the different stuff there. And I was like, I want one of those vests. <laughs> And I saw the inflatable sofa and I'm looking like, this kind of looks like the same thing. And I literally remember taking a pair of scissors and cutting mm -hmm. that I was cutting it out and I got a stapler and I put together my own vest. And I walked in um, a room and my mom was like, 
that's an interesting vest. Where did you get it from? And then I'm like, oh, I made it. She's like, you made it out of what? I was like, oh, I cut up the stuff. I got in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I got in so much trouble. But yeah, I, I knew that fashion design was going to be somewhere, somewhere in the in the line. And um, I believe it's going to go beyond, it's, it's definitely going to go beyond just shoes. But we're starting with the shoe line right now. What's the end game for you? Where do you want to go? What do you want to be? The end game for me, wow. Um, I want to leave my mark on this earth. I definitely want to leave my mark on this earth. I know a lot of people would say it can be very far-fetching, <laughs> but I really want to leave my mark on this earth. I want to travel all over the world, um, world tours, um, leaving foundations, leaving scholarships, leaving, um, I want someone from Camilla, Georgia, from Pelham, Georgia, from Bakerton, Georgia, from Pavo, from Ty Ty, those little small cities that you blink and you're out of there. I want someone from an area like I am from to look at someone and say somebody from a place that someone would call the middle of nowhere made it. That's what I want. I want someone to look at someone and see me on the on the billboard stage, on the Grammy stage, on the world tours, on the on the top of the charts and not and not for clout or for, you know, just recognition, but just to be able to see that anything is possible. Anything is possible. That's what I want. That's the end game for me. It's so magical. Your love is more than physical. It's spiritual, unbreakable, inseparable. Your love lasts forever. Thanks for watching Peach Jam. If you want to hear more from this artist, you can click here to see the full musical performance, or you can listen to the podcast at gpb.org slash peach jam. You can also find the podcast anywhere and everywhere that you get your podcast. And if you have a suggestion for Peach Jam, send me an email. It's peachjam at gpb.org. And be sure to like, follow, subscribe, click all the buttons. All that stuff helps.